Yeah, hi. So <coughs> we have uh, seen at some length what the normal distribution is. We have seen at some length what the sampling distribution is, and more importantly, the significance of uh, sampling distribution. Now, mm, let's go back to uh, one slide. If you remember, we started by saying that the original distribution is a normal distribution of height, from which we did the sampling distribution, and that also came up to be normal. And we also said most distributions in nature are not normal. I mean, are normal, sorry. Um, but we also said that if we talk about perceptions about a brand, it won't be normal because brand marketers are trying to uh, influence perception by communication. So it won't be normal. So when we take a sample survey, we're trying to measure things like brand perceptions and so on and so forth. So if the population data is not normally distributed, then how does this principle apply? In this example that we saw, the population was normal. From that, we could prove that the sampling distribution is normal, and therefore, one sample will be 67% likely to be very accurate and so forth. So if the population is not normal, because it's been influenced by communication or consumers' behavior and so on and so forth, then what happens to this? That becomes a relevant question, right? So, with respect to that question, there is something called the central limit theorem, which comes to our rescue. Okay, and I have no confidence, I have complete confidence in saying that the normal distribution, the sampling distribution, and the central limit theorem mm -hmm. are the only reason why the market research industry exists. Okay, so what does the central limit theorem say? When our sample size is greater than or equal to 30, then if our sample size is greater than or equal to 30, then the sampling distribution is normal. That is, it is like this, even if the population is not normally distributed. So what does this mean? It means if we take a sample size which is more than 30, then we safe. We don't have to worry about if the population is normally distributed. We just go ahead and assume that our sampling distribution will be normally distributed, that the one sample that we have taken will be, you know, 67% likely to be very close to the mean, 95% likely to be quite close to the mean, and 99% likely to be at least somewhat close to the mean. All those properties will apply. All those things we can take for granted if ensure that our sample size is 30 at least. Okay, so this is the code. Now, you'll remember that we talked about sample size determination. We said n equal to 30 is the golden rule. This is why it is the golden rule. Because when n is equal to 30, the central limit theorem says that even if the population from which the sample is drawn, even if that population is not normally distributed, then the sampling distribution of the mean, or whatever we're measuring, will be normally distributed. And therefore, all the principles of 67%, etc., etc., will apply. Right? There's one more, there are two conditions here to the n equal to 30. We can't blindly apply it. One condition is that these formulae apply to simple random sampling. 
they don't apply to say convenience sampling for example they apply only the probability sampling two the n equal to 30 within a homogeneous set that is an important part of it it can't be 30 across the population so if we're measuring height of people just for example then men should be 30 and women should be 30 because the height of men and women tends to be different mm -hmm. or you can you can even define it further saying men from north india should be 30 men from south should be 30 women from north should be 30 women from south should be 30 so minimum 120 we require because each of this is a separate population when it comes to height they're different right north indian tend to be taller than south indians on average so the north indian men are a separate population it has its own logic of normal distribution etc south indian men north indian women so within each respective population we have to draw a sample of at least 30 to make sure that we can stop worrying about this subpopulation normal. We can just straight away assume that the principles of 67%, 95%, and 9% apply. And everything else in sampling and market research derives from that. Is this clear? This is the core. Is, is this principle clear? Is it also clear why this is the core? Because if we did not have this, then when we're doing a sample survey, we don't know whether it's going to be accurate. We're just guessing. But now we have rules which tells us one, that we are accurate, which even tells us how likely we are to be, how much accurate. We can even calculate how accurate we are. Right? Clear? Okay, so let's go forward. To sum up, salient points to remember about the uh, normal distribution. Uh, is that nature loves normal distributions. That's point number one. The uh, normal distribution follows a bell-shaped curve and it is it's basically frequency distribution as we saw earlier. The broad principle is that there are more people in the population closer to the mean and fewer people away from the mean, right? So, which is why the curve is the bell-shaped curve. Uh, there are very few people who are very far away from the mean. So, meaning there are very few outliers, as we saw. In numerical terms, if mu is a mean and if standard DV, SD is a standard deviation of distribution, roughly 67% of the population will be within mu plus or minus one standard deviation. Roughly 95% will be within mu plus or minus two standard deviations. And 99% between mu plus or minus three standard deviations. So, the range of a normal distribution is mu plus 3 minus mu minus 3 and that gives us 6 standard deviations. So, for a normal distribution, if we can calculate the range, then the standard deviation is simply equal to range by 6, which is a fairly safe assumption to make. All right? Can I go forward? It's clear? Okay. And the other set of salient uh, points to remember, the concepts of sampling distribution and central limit theorem form the very core, the absolute, sorry about that, form the absolute foundation, the very core of all sample surveys because they tell us that a sample survey is likely to be accurate and they also give us a formula for calculating how likely we are to be accurate. So together, what the sampling distribution central limit theorem tell us is that when we take a sample size of minimum 30 people, then we can be somewhat confident that our survey is very, very accurate. We can be very confident or quite confident, basically 95% probability that a survey finding is very accurate or quite accurate. We can be very, very confident, 99% probability that a survey finding is somewhat accurate. Right? From a market research perspective, it's actually enough to understand these salient points. Even if you haven't understood the entire mathematics of take 1,000 samples, 1,000 surveys, each time sample says 100, calculate the mean of each of those 1,000, plot it like a frequency distribution. Even if you don't get all that intuitively, 
it doesn't matter. It is enough if you remember this with for the market researcher. It's not enough for the statistician. Right? Shall we close this chapter here? Any further questions? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Thank you.